Hi, Dad. Hello. Well, thank you for welcoming me on your beautiful channel, Froggy Love. I, I'm You're looking forward welcome. to this interview. Oh, there's Mom. Huh. Hi, Mom. I'm, be I'm being interviewed. Don't inter interrupt my interview. Go roast the breakfast. No, she, she's interviewing me. I'm important. When you when, don't fucking laugh at me. Don't fucking laugh at me. Listen, when 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 you when you get fucking uh, interviewed on YouTube, that means that you're important. I don't know how important I am, but let's get you're you know, important to me. Ah, uh, see that I'm important to Froggy. How you like that? Uh, you ain't got shit to say. Oh, ain't that a mu Did you just hear her? Uh, she, she said, at least she likes you. Nobody else does. Ain't this a son of a... Mom, it's not a roast. Yeah, this is not yeah. a roast on Dad. This is an actual real-life interview, so please stop. <laughs> Shut up. Quit laughing at me. Don't worry. I'll interview her later. Yeah, okay. most definitely. Then, I, Oh, I'd love that. Hmm. All right, let's so, go. To introduce yourself, you are Lunatic Dad on YouTube. You do a lot of different kinds of videos. You do where you break stuff. Your son breaks stuff. Um, you try to blog, but then you end up going ham. You annoy mom, which, by the way, I did react to that. I don't know if you've seen it, but I did react to you annoying mom. They were backwards but that's fine um have you ever learned you never piss off a woman in the kitchen well yes over a period of time i will actually give a true story to this my mom was the same way is that my dad would always try to go in there and you know try to help her cook and everything else and she was like that is not your place you need to leave out and i will go in and make the food for the kids so after a while my dad was just like okay we're gonna do this times but see you got to understand the best times with me and mama in the kitchen you got to understand i get free squeezes because her hands are full so right just letting you know it it's you know there are advantages to going ahead and going in the kitchen where the my wife is cooking and everything else her hands are full and so are my hands and the different disadvantage is literally she threatens to cut off your ear yeah well <laughs> that that could happen that that most definitely could happen but again, with Mama and myself over a long period of time up on this YouTube and everything else, everybody pretty much my whole life is out there on YouTube and everything else. Right. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to this interview because, uh, you know, I mean, just so that people get to maybe really know some get to know you, to me. really get to know me, not just as some type of damn freak. So, right. So how did you start doing YouTube? Well, it's funny you say that is that the very first YouTube uh, video was Dad Breaks Computer. Now, at this point in time, the very first video is that Dad had no idea what YouTube was, was even YouTube or anything. Kyle decided to start the channel Lunatic Dad. And I was just thinking that, you know, one day when this was being filmed, that very first computer, that he was just going to have it for, you know, personal use or whatever right and but he turned it out into after he recorded and everything else we knew a guy who is a cousin of kyle's best in class he's got like four million subscribers he's actually family to lunatic dad okay his name is best in class his name is michael and what ended up happening is he told kyle why don't you go ahead and upload that video start youtube kyle was like now mind you at this time kyle's only 14 years old so right. And that this was way back in the days, way back in the day. And Kyle was like, well, OK, I'm going to try it. Well, he put up the damn video. Dad destroys computer. The very first one and the damn thing within like 48 hours had like almost 100,000 views in 48 hours. I mean, it, oh, took, damn. it took off because, well, because you had the genre of angry grandpa and right and, and psycho dad and everything. And then Lunatic Dad burst onto the scene. Well, what ended up happening is when he, Kyle seen the reaction of the people, he decided, let's do YouTube and everything else. So I was like, all right, well, again, I knew nothing about YouTube. I didn't know any of this or anything. I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's do stuff. And I was like, okay, what, besides me getting pissed off and angry or whatever the case may be, 
what else are you going to do on the channel and everything? He said, Dad, that's the purpose of Lunatic, Dad, is that you never know what you're going to get. You know, right. It can be many different facets of the channel. And it's a great question that you started off with because that that was the, the, the born of Lunatic Dad was Dad Destroys Computer. Right. I, I, I have this myth that you destroy things just so that way you can get a new thing. Uh, I actually destroy things when I do get upset and everything is a way in which I release all this excess energy I have inside me. So when I'm all, let's say, riled up and everything else, uh, and one thing I, I have admitted over the years and everything else, everything then in which I have destroyed the Kyle's, I've had to replace. So I have put that out there that I felt bad. I destroyed some or whatever. And then I got to replace the shit anyway. So there's not too much logic to that. And hence, lunatic dad. It doesn't make sense why you destroy shit. Because you're going to replace the shit anyway. I just, I, I just figured the kids like when you destroy their shit so they get brand new shit. <laughs> well, that that could be the case. And no, I'm not answering you. Okay. I sorry about I get calls all the time, honey. It's fine. But we know I you're do, an important person. Yeah, I don't know about the important part, but well, I am a person. <laughs> but, this is so very true. But I mean, in the long run, like I said, uh, dad himself, I mean, over the years and everything else, I, I've destroyed so much stuff. I mean, if you actually counted how much shit I had to replace, I probably replaced more than what the hell. Uh, made on the YouTube channel. Just saying. So that's not right. smart business. It's not smart business, man. But uh, it, what it, it can be used as a tax write-off. And I do use it. I'm not gonna lie. See, once again, lunatic dad is being a fr uh, exposed by Froggy Love Paranormal. She's not gonna hold back. She's gonna ask me good questions. the hard hitting questions. Yeah, and and it's sometimes some hard questions. I'm like, shit, it, it falls into the wrong damn hands now, darling. That uh, people be like, we're gonna expose lunatic dad. You ain't exposing something if I'm already putting it out there now, are you? Exactly. So you do use it as a tax write-off. Oh yeah, most definitely. Everything that is destroyed is as a tax write-off. Correct. That's Correct. a smart thing. Correct. I do. So. Besides being a YouTuber and your kids being a YouTuber, what do you do for a living? And I know this question, but there might be people that don't know who you are. Okay, I'm going to take you uh, from the very beginning of young dad before I even started trucking. And everybody knows dad's a truck driver. Right. But I'm going to take you before that is that dad started out his very first job. I worked at Wendy's. I worked at Wendy's at the age of 16. And then from there, I progressed. And believe it or not, when I give you this answer, even you don't know this answer to this, hun. When I turned 18 in the summer, I was a guidance counselor. Yeah, can you believe it? Dad being a counselor to children? Huh. I mean, you do have a ha history of having children. Yes, <laughs> yes. I Well, I do have eight of them. And, right, and that's and not included all the adopted children that you've this is true. I have Michael, my oldest. I have David, my second oldest. And my third oldest, and that's why I fall in love with you, Tanya, is that my daughter's name, my third one, is it's Tanya. Tanya. Isn't that fucking ironic? Then you have Amber, Stephen, Matthew, Lawrence, Kyle. Now, if you ask me all the ages, it may take a little bit longer because I got to reflect <laughs> in my eye, in my head. And let's not go there. We ain't okay, got they're in between the age of 35 and 21. 38, 38 and 22. 38 and 22. Yeah. After, after the first three kids, you're like, uh, I know you were born third. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and I'm always wondering, believe it or not. The last and final one, which was Kyle. Again, I'm putting out information that has never been out on YouTube, and even you don't know. The last and final child, which was Kyle, we wanted a girl so bad. Now, I'm going to give you a little story. This is going in depth. This is stuff that is first time ever released out there, ever. When we had Kyle, Mama thought it was going to be a girl because we wanted the third girl badly. Right. What ended up happening is because she had two different C-sections. She had the, this line and then this line. And if you have the cross, you cannot have another child after that. 
because it could risk the mother's life. Well, they had to do that. And believe it or not, the last and final child we wanted was a girl. And we got Kyle. That's why sometimes I'll mess around on YouTube and call him Kyleen. That is the backstory. Because you truly what, wanted a girl, but you got Kyle and you, you're you happy with Kyle. You just like picking on him. Yes, yes, yes. Pretty much in a nutshell. But like I said, this first time released ever up on an interview with Froggy Love and everything else. And you guys are getting first time information that no one, even people that are closest to me on YouTube, have no idea uh, some of the stuff I'm releasing out there. So very good, darling. Okay, so I know you're going to say your kids and your wife are your biggest achievement, but I want you to go outside of the family, and I want you to, what's your biggest achievement that you've succeeded outside of family? My biggest achievement that I can uh, truthfully say, and it's not on social medias or anything else, my biggest achievement is that, and this is another first-time true story, there was a boy, I'm going to leave him, anonymous he came to my home he was addicted to heroin very bad and he was a friend of one of my sons and we took him in uh me and mama we turned around and in order to get him through the detox because he didn't want to go through the detox center or nothing i'll give his name because you guys don't know his name is brian and he came to the home and everything and my son came and asked dad can we help him i said so he broke it down to me what his issues were and everything else and he said he's addicted to heroin now everybody right. knows that heroin is probably one of the worst drugs you can ever possibly be ever addicted to 90 percent of the people that are on heroin do overdose before they can or they have a complication in the um rehabilitation and detoxing Yes. So and, it's a horrible drug to ever be addicted to. Yes, most definitely. Well, anyway, Brian, he came to the house. Uh, the number one thing in which I did and Mama did, and it was tough. And this, I'm going into little stories so that you're going to have to follow me on this, honey. Is that we went ahead and locked him in the room, which is downstairs in my basement, which is now Kyle's room. And we locked it, took the key, everything else. And whenever he needed food or whatever, we would, you know, open up the door and give it to him. Make a long story short on this aspect, he started freaking out, yelling and screaming throughout the night and everything else because he's going through his detox and everything else. Make a long story short, just less than a year ago, he came and visited the home. He literally came up to me, gave me the one of the biggest hugs and heartfelt love that I felt and told me, thank you for saving my life because I would not be here today if you did not show me harsh love. I would not open up the door. We would not let him out only to go to the bathroom and everything else. That was it. It may sound like you were, I had someone captive and everything else, but I knew that the only way that he it was to get save out his, of his life was to save his life. And yeah. we did. That was one of my most proudest moments because I was able to save a young man from actually, like you say, either committing suicide or drug overdose. And that is one of my biggest moments on the face of the earth that I was able to literally save a young man's life. Which is actually, I mean, not many people can out there can be like, I saved somebody's life. Yes. So that, I give you props 100%. That is truly amazing. Thank you. Now, I know you have a great heart. I mean, you have helped so many YouTubers and, again, children. And you were a counselor, which means that you had to have a, a heart just so that way you could help the children in need. I also know your backstory, but and I'm sure a lot of people know your backstory. Um, when you first started YouTube... Like you said, Kyle was like 14, but then you got in with a group and um, Nations 13. Mm, 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 mm. Why? I know that you've said on many streams that you have literally, you were just dragging yourself to the point of no return. Mm -hmm. Why did you fall out with them? Well, 
when I started out with Nations 13, it was all I felt was a family. People had each other's back. People promoted one another. People went ahead and went to different streams and everything else. But as right. as popularity and everything started to grow with Nations 13, and they forgot that who basically put them on the map and everything. And the way I look at it is, is that I myself have put so many hours and so many sleepless nights going to work dead tired, going on live streams, going on live streams while I'm in the truck, which believe it or not, one of my jobs, I lost my job because I was caught on a live stream. That is right. I remember also that. Known. And that was when I was with nations 13. Well, make the long story short when my, uh, when my family members had passed away and everything else, they were never there for that. Never, never. Right. My, so you, so that's kind of like a double standard because you were always there for people, but pe they weren't there for you. 100%. And like I said, I put on this bravado. I put on this persona that I'm so super strong and everything else, but I'm just like every other person, a normal person. I've got feelings. I got emotions. And if you just dismiss my emotions and feelings, then that makes me wonder, are you truly close to me? Are you truly care about me personally, the person, not the YouTuber? Not what you can get from me, not what you know that you can get over on me or whatever the case may be. But the 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 ending point, which got really bad, and that was the ending of Lunatic Dad, where he wanted nothing to do with nations, was that uh we were they were up on a panel, dad and mom were, you know, of course, watching because that's what I do. And one of the members of Nations, Tina, and I will call her by name, and I really don't give a shit is that she turned around and said that my wife is a Hitler bitch, okay? Literally, a member of nations that I was a part of and everything else. Now, but to say that about my wife and everything and everybody else, no one else in that chat and all the nations was up on that panel. I'll never forget the day. And not one of them said, whoa, that's out of line. You made, right. it, you made it personal with dad. And then when I turned around and it, and literally, believe it or not, I don't watch none of their content. I don't follow them. I don't do any of the above because I wanted a clean break. And that's the way you do things. If you cannot go ahead and see eye to eye, instead of going ahead and lurking on somebody or trying to go ahead and get some dirt on somebody or whatever, if it's to that point where it's gotten really personal, then just break it off. And this is a word to the wise on anybody on social media. If it's to that point, what are you doing? What what are you going to get out of it? What self-satisfaction are you going to get out of it by attacking each other and everything else? No, just break it off. And that's what dad did with nations. Dad and nations, I've said it on many streams, are dead. It's it that that relationship. And they have, they have tried to reach out to me and everything else, but they can't because they're blocked. So they get surnames or they'll get different type of channel names or whatever and have tried to reach out to dad over time. And everything saying, hey, can we talk? Can we do? No, you cannot talk to that and everything else. Because why would I want to set myself up for more heartache and pain when I'm too old for first off drama up on YouTube? I'm too old for this shit. Oh, right, else. which is very understandable. I'm not even that old and I'm over drama. Correct. And like I said, I mean, the people I'm involved with now, you, a.k.a., <laughs> and everything else, is a true blue heart, a true person that I can honestly say doesn't expect anything from that, just friendship and someone to talk to and everything else. Exactly. And I was going to say, how hard is it to be a genuine friend to people, whether it be on YouTube or not? So I totally get that. Yes. and. As I said before, YouTube is a scary place, honey. It's a scary place because you got to be very careful of who you associate yourself with and who may have other alternatives around you. Now, sometimes up on YouTube, people get in an argument or they don't see eye to eye or whatever the case may be. I always say before you go ahead and go to that person or try to work something out, calm down, get a clear head. And everything else so that you don't go into it with raw emotion where you're upset and you're already your anxieties up and everything else because you're going to be on the defensive right you're going to be a, you're going to be on attack mode and you're not going to really settle anything or let anybody else you know 
This is true. You're not going to voice your opinion in a, or your feelings in a proper way. You're just going to be very defensive and have and a wall up because your feelings are still hurt. And that is something in which dad has over years had a conflict within him himself. As you know, I'm a very brash human being. Right. Else. I'm very, I was going to say, how uh, is that going with the bipolar? Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, my bipolar, when it does kick in, like I said, I'm having moments now where I'm fighting my inner demons and everything. Right. Else. And I don't want my demons to come out within myself. Now, I'm not talking about paranormal people on this interview. This is my inner demons, my feelings that sometimes when, when, I, when I know I start getting angst and I start getting a little shake in my hand or my eyes start twitching when I get upset or whatever the case may be, that's my bipolar. That's It wants to go ahead and just lash out and everything else. But over years, gotten older and everything else, as much as people say you can't control bipolar, and everything else you're right you can't control it but you can try to minimize the effects of bipolar with mechanisms that dad does use like me when i get upset a lot of times now and everything i'll put on some music i'll try to put on soft music not head banging music not loud music i'll go ahead and put on some music in which will go ahead and put me in a different state of mind to try to calm me down and everything it doesn't always work but i listen to meditation music Meditation music is beautiful to listen to. Right. And, it, is. it normally ends up putting me to sleep, but when I wake up, I feel a lot better. Correct. Correct. And it's something in which, like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm bearing my soul of people who are going to be watching this video and everything to Froggy because I trust her and I love her. And I really believe that they, it's just pure intentions just to do an interview so that you guys can get an insight into lunatic dad the person not lunatic dad the youtuber right and that's my thing i i always see how people don't comprehend that just because you're a youtuber you're also a human being and you have emotions and feelings and i have been asking hard questions but not that in-depth questions or i in-depth questions but not hard questions and the reason why is because at the end of the day you are an amazing human being that you and mama have helped so many people and you constantly give your heart out to people and i've seen so many people just stomp on other people and i don't want that to happen to you and i want people to realize you're not just the person that runs around smashing things you're an amazing human being that cares deeply for your friends and your family. And one thing I believe in is loyalty. And I, and I do believe in that loyalty to one another goes a long ways. And again, I, I don't look for attention upon myself, but I am also the type of person that if, or anybody, anybody up on this YouTube platform, whatever, someone does something good for you and someone really goes to bat for you or whatever, you know, acknowledge that person and everything else. Don't blow these things off because you may look at it. Maybe your intentions are not to be that way. You know, sometimes, you know, people don't mean to do that and everything else, but right. it, it'll come off as something like that. And that's where dad sometimes has to differentiate himself that, you know, the intention it is not that way but it came off that way you know so i totally get that and then there's other times where you don't want everybody else to feel like left out like okay they did this but so did everybody else so i want to acknowledge everybody but in reality if it wasn't for that one person or the you know a group of people yeah yeah the other flock went to came in so i mean it's a give and take it it's really a give is and take it is and it's hard to find genuine people on youtube i mean yes yes there's honey. Yes. so many people out there that what can i get for you from you what can you do for me and that's totally not what I am. I'm what can I do for you type mm -hmm. person, not what can I get. 
So I totally get that because I get used and abused a lot. So I just wanted, I really wanted to get your perspective on YouTube and who you are as a person because I know who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'll tell you this up on YouTube. Like I said, it's got its pros and cons. You know, right. once once you've been on YouTube over a long period of time, and this is such so true. Any YouTuber that has been on YouTube a long time will tell you this. You start to get jaded. OK, you really do. You start to get jaded and everything else and who you trust and everything else is because over a period of time, you know, there's a difference between trusting somebody and knowing that you can tell them anything and it'll stay there or and then telling somebody something and it gets all over YouTube six months later because you got in an argument or whatever the case may be. And then all your garbage and all your stuff in which you said gets out there and everything. You they air your dirty laundry and add on top of it. And I don't have no tide to, and I have no tide to clean that dirty laundry. Okay. <laughs> but I totally get it. Exactly. And at the end of the day, you just want to be who you are and you don't want everybody to assume that you're, you know. Correct. Correct. I'm going to move my camera closer. It's Maybe okay. You be better. No, I see you loud and clear, darling. Loud and clear. We got those sexy glasses on. That's beautiful. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're so, in an interview and we're talking porn. Okay, let's go. <laughs> That's me and you dad though we bounce off of each other hardcore uh do you like being a youtuber i do like being a youtuber only to an extent is that over a long period of time the more and more that people know you and the more and more people let's say they see that your numbers see that's the problem that i that i run into is that people look at the numbers and everything else they're like hey man get with lunatic dad hey call him up let's try to you know or I know in the past people have known me they'd be like, man, this one person's asking to meet you and everything else. And they're going through me instead of just going directly to you and everything. I'm like, well, then you ignore that because they, if you don't have enough respect to try to go through dad himself and you have to do back channels in order to get in touch with me or whatever the case may I my life's an open book. I mean, on Twitter, lunatic dad underscore dad and everything else uh, on Instagram, I'm all over the place. So if anybody truly ever wanted to uh, talk with that or whatever, and again, I will I will say this, and 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 that I do not privately talk to many many people. I don't. It's just that but otherwise I'd be on the social media's twenty four seven, and that cannot happen. That cannot. Right, happen. your family comes first over top of Most any definitely. YouTube. Most definitely. Most definitely. And I have noticed over a period of time, uh that you know youtube has now gotten to the point of hooray for me and fuck you that i mean part of my french but it is honestly it has i see so many people as soon as they get you know money flowing in it's oh well i don't need you no more because i have this but in the reality uh, we'll go back to nations 13 they needed you because you were the main person that everybody was going to see. In the beginning. In the beginning. But I will give Nations this credit. And trust me, this is hard for Dad to say this. But over time, they did evolve. And they said creativity. They are a very creative group. But somewhere along the lines, they went from being creative and entertaining to people to if you're not with them, uh, you're against them. That would, that's, right. where, that's where the mentality came and everything. And they grew a lot of hate over a period of time. And it sucked in dad to that. Dad did never wanted hate. He never wanted to be combative with other channels and everything else. But they got involved in so much behind the scenes bad shit where a lot of people turned on them. A lot of people went after them and everything. And dad, they tried to roll dad into the whole ball of wax too. That, hey, you're a part of nations and everything else. Just like, you know, I'm an outlaw, okay? Right. And everything is just because one outlaw may be a dick or done something that may have pissed people off, whatever. Don't assume all outlaws are that way, okay? Sometimes exactly. that, that outlaw might have had a bad day, 
might have well, whatever you know we all have bad days that sometimes you think we're all that, human beings exactly so one thing i will always say and dad did say this when i broke up with nations i told my wife i would never be a part of a group again because my heart was ripped out okay well i went back on that didn't i i'm as you see i'm an outlaw <laughs> So you're an outlaw. We love and appreciate you so fucking much. Not because of what you can. And I'm gonna really eerie. I'm gonna say this over and over and over and over again. Okay. We don't love you for what you can do for us. We love you because of the person you are. And that's very important to me. That's very important. I don't care if I go all week without you responding to one of my text messages, and I'll still throw your ass under the bus for that one, too. So you're calling me out on my own interview. <laughs> all right, Froggy calls out Lunatic Dad. There you go, people. I do it every live stream. Yes, you do. But I also understand you have a job. You get up at, like, that ass crack of midnight, and you work your job, and then you come home, and you – it's not just – you know, you coming home, it's you coming home to mom and your kids and, you know. Plus, I'm a lot dad, older now, so dad, I get that. Yeah, and, and I get tired. I mean, exactly. I mean, if, if I'm out there 14 hours, I always tell this to people who know me or whatever the case may be, go out there 14 hours, wake up an hour early, and then it takes me time to go to work. Get work 14 hours, come 45 minutes to get home and everything else. So now you're already up to almost 16, 17 hours. When does dad sleep and everything? I'm exactly. An older you get very little sleep. So like on Fridays and Saturday or Sundays, we, we I appreciate that, you know, you take your time out and you come and hang out with us on Saturdays or whatever, whenever you can. Right. And a lot hey. of times I got to make time, you know, like I said, with mama, when it's the weekend or whatever, and she wants to go out to dinner or whatever the case may be. Well, wife comes first, always. And exactly. Happy wife, happy life. That is true. That is true. That's why I'm always smiling. So I must be getting something, something. I'm just saying. Not <laughs> that, because I don't get nothing. I'm too old for that now. That damage has already been done. <laughs> Well, and that that's the thing. Mom's very happy. Now, I will say in some of the videos, you see her like jerk and be like, why are you yelling at me? And it's not really that she's scared of you. It's more that you're yelling in her face. I, you know, I, back too. And that's a good question because, you know, there's a lot of times that people be like, how can he yell at his wife or whatever the case may be? Well, I say, well, after 44 years, which I just had my 44th year anniversary. Happy mama, anniversary. Thank you, my love. And I will honestly say, when, you, when you've been with someone so long or whatever, we don't look at it as we're being combative or whatever. We're just looking at, eh, whatever, and everything else. Because we don't frown. And that's some advice I would ever give for anybody that's in a relationship. Don't frown on the little shit. Because when major shit happens in your relationship... You're not going to know how to deal with it because if you went ahead and blew something up so little and then when something major happens, you're not going to know how to deal with it. Because if the little shit caused you a problem in your relationship, how in the hell are you going to deal with the bigger shit, the bigger issues, you know, with the kids and everything else, them right. coming up and doing stupid shit and everything else that, you know, might have cost money or whatever to get them out of and everything else. You know, trust me, my kids are not. Fucking angels, as you can see on YouTube. Talking about your kids, Kyle needs to go get his uh, car checked. I was watching the one where Kyle broke his TV and he got in his car and left. When he started driving, there was a really bad rattle. Mm. And I don't know if you heard it. But yes. there is a really bad rattle. And of course, you know, Toters, he was a mechanic. And he's like, what the hell was that sound? He thought it was our car because I was listening to it in the car. <laughs> well, thank you for your love and support. <laughs> I like I said, I throw you up when I go to bed, and I throw if I'm in the car for a while. Uh, we all listen to you yell and scream, and we laugh and joke. You know, I'm glad I can amuse you. I'm a clown. Well, it's okay. not like laugh and joke like we're picking on you. It's laughing and joking with you because, like, yep, there he goes, breaking something again. 
And by the way, people, I just want to make this announcement. Froggy does not even know this, but we will be doing the pre-records once every Saturday, an interview with Froggy and Dad. And it may not be an interview. It just might be talking about just regular bullshit or whatever the case may be. So I have just announced it on her channel and she doesn't even realize it. But now I have. That's my special surprise for you that every Saturday we're going to do a pre-record and it's going to be Froggy and Dad. And we're going to tackle whatever issues she feels like she wants to tackle. And but let's continue with this interview. So that we're also going to tackle some of the issues dad wants to tackle, because I know that sometimes you really don't have a lot of people to discuss things with besides mom. And sometimes you need an outer perspective that, you know. Yes. And 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 you know what? That's why I'm making this show with me and you and I will promote it, of course. I will most definitely promote it on Lunatic Dad's main channel because that's the only channel now because Dad's yes. no longer LD Uncensored and everything because Lunatic Dad is just Lunatic Dad. That's it. And we will be doing this uh, thing with a uh, show, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's not today's an interview, but today's an interview. We'll, we'll figure out a date for it. We'll figure it out. We 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 got to think of something. Uh, Probably really, deep really good. conversations with Froggy and Lunatic Dad. Oh, listen! I might have one. Uh, Froggy and Lunatic Dad undercover. Uh, there we go. <laughs> hey, 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 I like that one. That that one sounds like a pretty good one. Unless you come up with one better, and then I go with that. It's your channel, darling. True. So, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. In the bit in your lifetime, you have you have learned many things. What is the biggest life lesson you've ever learned? Ah, wow, that is a fantastic question. Wow, wow, holy shit. One thing is a law that I say I have learned is that there's not always someone out there trying to hurt you, that there is good people out there, but you have to, dis not just on YouTube, just in life in general, that there are sometimes, there are good people out there, that there's not always negative in society and in life, that, but once you find that right person, and once you find the right people that just genuinely want to see nothing but health and happiness for you, them are to me a dime, I mean, it's very rare you're going to run into people like that and everything but I, I that's one thing i would always say is that don't close down your emotions and think that everybody's out there to get you that there is people out there in society that want nothing but the best for you right and i know the concept is build the wall so evil can't get in but when you build the wall so high that evil can't get in light can't get in either so true well and there's gonna be bad people in this world but there's also going to be amazing positive people that's just gonna all they want to do is help you and love you and appreciate you correct don't push correct. those people away make sure you and, let them in and like on social media uh especially youtube or any any platform you know because i always hear well i'm going to this platform i'm going to that platform oh there's it, it, drama a, on every platform exactly Exactly. I, I hear it all the time and I just brush my eyes 90 times and I'm like, yeah, and you think that it's nothing on that platform? Okay. You just haven't run into it yet. And right. But I can honestly say that if you're looking for drama, drama will come your way if you're looking for it. And everything. Right. Else. But you have to go ahead and remember that there are always somebody behind that camera and they're human beings these are people we're all people first we're not just some type of uh what do they call that that fake thing that ap robot what? robot ai ai right we're not ai okay i mean but that's a, a subject for another day but right the ai take it over the world correct correct but i again i do feel that if people go ahead and treat others the way they would want to be treated, if people would just live by that one rule, things would be so much better in society, in life, on social medias, and everything else. But the fact still remains, it's never going to be that way. We all know it. 
and everything else. But you got to be very careful who you do associate with. You got to be very careful. You know, look into their history, look into their background. Just don't go by someone's face value. They tell you, oh, we love you. We care about you and everything else. And then they're on a stream somewhere else bashing the living hell out of you and everything right. because and they you, didn't get what they wanted or whatever. Exactly. And we we don't associate ourselves with those type of people. No, no, not at all. I have. A, so how has social media affected your life? Well, wow, wow. Man, you're coming up with some good freaking questions here. Oh, boy. Well, first off, I will honestly say I when I first started in the social media, no one knew who the hell I was. But how I knew things started getting serious and everything else is that when I was in my truck going to the pilots or to the lows or whatever, and someone and this has happened many, many times. You're that guy on YouTube. Now, perfectly strangers I've never met before. I have had taken pictures and it was documented on Nations 13 and everything else where the person actually came up to me and said, can I take a picture with you? I want to give it to my son because he's a fan of you and everything else. I, that's when I knew, wow, wow. So something is, uh, this is not normal. Someone just doesn't come up to you out of clear blue sky. And you know, that's from another state or whatever that's traveling right. on through. Hey, you're that guy. You're that ain't that they never were able to say, I'll be honest. They never were able to say, uh, lunatic dad. No. They always would say, you're that angry guy that, that fucks up shit and everything else. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's angry grandpa. And they're like, no, not that person. I said, how about uh, psycho dad? No, no, no. But it is with a dad. I'm like, lunatic dad? And they're like, that's the guy. That's who you are. And, you know, and then sometimes, you know, they'll want to ask me questions and everything else. And I'm just sitting there like, uh, the, I the, love you, but I got to get back to work, homie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly sometimes i felt very uncomfortable oh, over in the beginning but now being on social medias for so long and everything else i mean like i said my life is a complete open book but again that also comes with a lot of hate believe me if you go on my channel on somebody's destruction videos or kyle or myself someone saying real bad shit about my wife and and everything but i get it i get it you know, when you get into the realm of social media, remember, it is there's good and then there's the bad. And if you don't have a strong, thick skin, you will not make it on social media. You just won't. I mean, especially my type of content. I mean, you're not going to expect everybody to say you're the greatest person in the world when you're fucking your son's fucking shit up. I mean, it's they're, they're going to be upset, but. At the end of the day, I mean, your kids are truly amazing in themselves. Uh, of course, we watch the um, Kyle Buys You New TV. Yes, that was the latest one. Now, again, me being jaded in my own house because of being on YouTube, I really felt if you looked at that video, I didn't go straight into that room right away. Oh, I no, had... you, you were like... You know when you uh the FBI busts into your house and they kick the door open and then they yeah. uh, that was you. Yeah. That was so 100 percent you. I'm like, is dad waiting for the squat team to roll up behind <laughs> them? So they can... <laughs> but that is so true though, because when we opened up when I opened up the door and everything you were I'm waiting thinking, for a pie I'm in the I'm face. A pie in the face or something or whatever. And but believe it or not, the last thing I expected was and he actually took the time to go ahead and put the TV up and everything. Right. Out. So that he didn't me, just give you a box. Here you go, Dad. He he went above and beyond and put the TV up for you. So you didn't have to do it when you got home from work. And that just shows what kind of character Kyle is. Yeah, he got upset and busted it. But he also, you know, took the time and put it up there. And I know you didn't yell at him to go buy you a TV or no, anything hell no. along those lines. I wasn't talking to him until because I was pissed off. I'm like, I got a broken ass TV upstairs in my room. So when I want to go to bed, see, I that's another thing that a lot of people don't know. Lunatic Dad, you sleep must, with the TV on. I got to have a TV on. I have to have a TV on, and everything. But again, it was one of those things that yeah, did it warm my heart? Did it surprise me? Yeah, it did. But you know. I really believe in my heart that 
it was already that he was going to buy me a TV. So he destroyed the other one and tried to get a rise out of me. Well, he got the wrong rise out of me. And everything right. else. I mean, regardless of him destroying it or not, the point being is there was nothing wrong with that TV. I could have gave it away in a giveaway. Damn it. I could have gave it away if he was going to buy me another one. I'm like, hey, you want one? I'll ship it out to your fucking out. But now the only thing I'd be able to ship out is a fucking destroyed TV, which is now in my garage waiting for the garbage people to pick it up. Which, I mean, at this, if you really want to think about it, though, he's in the aspects of, well, we'll do this for, you know, dad, but we're going to do it this way. Mm -hmm. He's learned. And this is no shade to you at all, Dad. He's learned destroy shit and then go buy new shit. Yeah, I somehow I I agree with you that you know he knows that up on YouTube with the destruction videos and everything else. But see, when the video was being made, that's my true raw reaction. Now, what right. his, what his intentions are after that is a horse of a different color. Exactly. You know, I, I he was that. trying to get the rise out of you and he didn't get the rise he wanted. He got totally opposite. So at the end of the day, he's like, I better make this up to dad. And you know, the funny part about it, I'm, I'm going to bring this up when a breakfast came in and, and visited dad and everything. And he brought a Green Bay Packer flag and everybody knows dad hates the Packers with his We all life. know you hate the Packers. But he wanted, he thought he was going to get me to burn it or whatever. But my dad, he was sitting inside the, uh, you know, at the kitchen table, and I know he's a big Packer fan. So I was like, here, you take it and everything else. So, again, it was the reaction that pe my son or Brex or whoever thought you were going to get, but you didn't get that reaction. You know, No, you got something completely different, which is out of character for you, which is truly, <laughs> it's out of character for the YouTube you. I'll put it that way. Not the human you. And everybody goes for the YouTube and not the human. Well, yes, and I agree. And and that's the thing in which, you know, like even when the dad does his vlogs or vlogs, whatever the hell they're called. I don't even know the fucking term vlogs. for it anymore. Yeah, that too. And I'm just talking about just general life, showing the outside, walking around or whatever the case may be. Them, them a lot of people, they don't get into that. I mean, but I, I do it is because... I want my legacy to be passed down to my grandchildren and great grandchildren. I want them to know, and I don't want my everything I've done in throughout my life to not mean anything. I want them to have something so that they can always go back on. And when I'm passed on that, they can say, Hey, you know, there, here's your great grandpa. Oh, wow. He was crazy and everything else. Well, now you got the funny videos. Now you got the live stream, which I don't do much anymore, but I mean, they have so much content of me out there that I, it makes me feel good inside as a man, as a father and everything else that they'll always have that no matter what. I wish I had that of my father that I'd have all these videos. It'd be great. I was I'd just going to say, I wish I had videos of my grandmother where we would just sit down and discuss the old times. There was so many times we discussed the old times. I love and, old times. And it would make you smile and you'd be grinning and then you, everything else. And, and that's the thing in which, you know, that we are lucky to be on YouTube and everything else. Because as long as there's YouTube, my memory will always be there. And YouTube's not going nowhere. You're talking over 2 billion people. It's oh, not going right. nowhere. And, and literally, you can download every single one of those videos and throw them on a memory card. And, you know, they can have videos of grandpa and great grandpa and it will be passed on down through the generations and mm -hmm. and i do have videos that are already pre-recorded they're already ready to go there's four of them that are after i'm already passed on believe it or not i've done four videos that i've already told kyle and i told mama i said in the event something happens to me these four videos must be put up this is for the future I mean, it's kind of like uh, when you do a diary or you do a, uh, what do they call that, a will. After yeah. the person's already dead, then they tell you what, what they feel or what they want to do for right. their family or whatever. 
So dad has the same thing. There's four videos and hopefully we don't have to upload them for a while, huh? Yes. Let's keep <laughs> you around for a very long time. Yeah, I was, at, I was going to ask you, where do you plan on your YouTube channel going? What do you want to do in the future with your YouTube channel? And well, what do you, yeah. when I retire, I probably, because I'll be bored a little bit more because, you know, I'm not as active and yeah. everything. I'll be probably doing probably people see dad more live streaming and everything else because I mean I tell you the truth, I won't have anything to do and everything. <laughs> so I'll be doing a little bit more live streaming when I when I uh do it. But I mean I can see the channel. What what I've been hoping for and praying for is my ultimate goal, and Kyle knows it, mama knows it, we all know it, is that I want that channel to go over a hundred thousand on uh subscribers now you would say a hundred thousand is nothing well we've been around eight years and it's only at 34 almost now and when you got over 27 million views on a channel you you wanted a little bit more uh let's say uh subscribers that go to it and everything right but they only do it when there's destruction well when i'm 80 years old what the fuck am i gonna destroy i ain't gonna destroy shit. i'm barely able to be able to walk my teeth. There you go. <laughs> I'll throw them up against the wall. Your bones. <laughs> yeah, no shit. No shit. But, I mean, it's the legacy that I want to leave is what's most important to me. What's most important to me is my legacy. It, it, it means everything to me. Everything. Not just up on social media. With my wife. With my children and everything. I want them to always say, he did it his way, but he did it in style. Right. So... We should be prepared for more vlogs. Do you plan on traveling? Well, when I retire, yes. When I retire, I, I would love to be able to go. Me and Mama has already made a decision. And it's something more so for her and somewhat for me is that we want to go to every state in the United States. We're going to go state to state to state. We're going to start out in the Midwest. Okay. And we're, of course, I got to start out. That's where I fucking live. Right. And then, we're going to head west, and then we're going to head all the way back east. We want to cover every state, and that will happen. That has been my lifelong dream, is to be able to touch every state. And I want to do a video in every state. And the people that dad knows and people that dad is close to, he wants to go to each and everybody's home or whatever. Go out to dinner, do something or whatever. Now, in the meantime, will there be times where there may be a meetup? And everything, or do something, or whatever, with people. Oh, hey, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah. I'm coming up to Illinois. Exactly. I mean, people who are close to me for sure, uh, they're without a shadow of a doubt. But that is my ultimate goal: is that I do want to travel all 50 states and everything, and then I can say, put that off my bucket list. Do you think you're going to go to Poland anytime? That is on Mama's bucket list. That's funny that, that you should interview her. She'd probably tell you all about oh, it. Oh, I'm, I'm planning on it. I'm well, waiting for you, it, her you, to agree you to know, it. You know her. Uh, she she loves to talk. She talks more than I do. <laughs> That's amazing how to even say that. But, yeah, most definitely. I would love to go to her homeland and where she's from, Zakopane, Poland, and everything. Yes, that is also on the list. That must happen. Certain things... We ha I want to see where she grew up. I never seen where mama grew up. I know where she grew up, but I've never been to Poland and everything else. So, yes, that would be in a very an exciting trip. And, yes, I would blog that, blog that or whatever. Most definitely. Dad in another country and shit. Do you think you're going to take your grandbaby with you? Well, that would be up to my children. That would be up to them if they want to go ahead <laughs> and have the grandbaby with me and everything else. That is a big excitement news. And everything else, and it's getting closer and closer. Baby, I know I'm so excited. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But they've already said, Dad, the baby cannot be on, on oh, which video. is totally understandable because there is one too many perverts out of this world. And you know what? And you know, speaking of that, I mean, you know, you got you got so many predators out there and everything else. And to me, I think they're the, that'll be for another show because that, that, oh, yeah, I can get really, really angry about that type of situation and everything else but yeah i mean the way i see it is that you know you don't want to objectify your grandbaby before before they even get the chance to be a, a child 
Exactly. I, I and don't forget the grandbaby already as it's coming up or whatever. I'm sure they're gonna end up having YouTube and they're gonna go see all these fucking videos of me and the family and everything else. And trust me, I'm sure I'm gonna have to answer to my grandkids when they get older that grandpa. Well, why was the guy on there? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why did you say that? Why did you do that? I'll be like, oh my god, huh? Don't I'm worry sorry. about it. <laughs> Well, I've never apologized. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> well, let's see here. At this point in time, I was dealing with bipolar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it never goes away. Never and your daddy away. pissed me off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, if it's a boy, the one that's coming will be Lawrence William Jr. the third. They, oh. they've, they've already said it. It'll be the third. If it's a girl, that's I've got so the name exciting. of it. Christiana, Christiana, some, 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 Christi oh, no. I don't know. It, it, have to get it. I, I want a boy because I want my legacy to go on to another generation. Fuck, three generations of lunatic dad. <laughs> I don't know if YouTube can handle that, darling. I don't <laughs> we can handle it. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, Terno, even half as amazing as you are, we can handle it. I love you. We're good. We're, we're we're perfectly fine so if you had a choice and um, i'll put it to you this way if mama said it's either the family or youtube which one would you pick family case close i knew you were a good man i always choose the family i would i would literally if she said you have to take down the channel or the, the family i'd say take down the channel in a second in a second I'll be like, but make sure you freaking before you take down the damn channel, keep all the damn videos just in case you change your fucking mind. Dad? I don't know what happened to Dad. He paused. Okay. Now that we're both back. The aliens. <laughs> the aliens us. tried taking dad away from us. Ain't but he so fought true. him. He fought him with the baseball bat. That's right. We gave him five of these. I have a question for you, Dad. Oh, shoot. Have you ever had a paranormal experience? Mm, I've had multiple paranormal experiences. And I can get into that, but this can last a while, darling. I <laughs> had... Fine. We've had banging down the stairs in our basement and uh, where one of my brothers went ahead and died. Uh, we've had banging uh, upstairs in our bedroom. Mama, many times she will tell you where she's laying by herself in the bed. I'm not even home. I'm completely at work. Honest to God, truth, she'll tell you this. And literally she'll feel the impression on the bed, someone sitting on the bed. And when it very first time ever happened, she thought I came home from work. And she was like, she told me, and she's like, well, move, you're on my feet. Move, literally. And I'm sitting there like, I was at work, darling. I don't know what you're talking about. And it's happened multiple times in my bedroom, which nothing ever bad happened there. Only good things, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Eight but, kids later, we know what you mean. Hey, yes, 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 yes. And, but... My home is built on a Indian burial ground. So by that being said, we believe that it's not something that's trying to hurt us or anything. And I also had another paranormal experience. I was up on talking with Chris and Missy, a Brexit paranormal channel, and the picture behind them moved as I'm sitting there talking with them. So I would consider that a paranormal activity. Yeah, that's a paranormal experience. That's not normal. And I believe it or not, I was a very much skeptic of the paranormal in the beginning. I used to think I'm like, these people are fucking whacked. I mean, they, they, these people, they, they're one flew over the damn cuckoo's nest. But well, I mean, we could honestly say that because of the simple fact that we go out looking for the paranormal. Mm -hmm. And exactly. You guys are actually wanting to do the investigations and everything. Else. I, me personally, I think that if you're looking for something, you'll find it. I think the people who are skeptics or people who don't really, you know, look for it or whatever, that I think the spirits are less prone to go ahead and try to gravitate to that person. I could be right. wrong, but I think. Well, if 
I mean, to a point, because spirits are going to mess around no matter what. But if you ignore them, most of the time, they're like, yeah, they're boring people. I heard Kyle, was it Kyle? Did an Ouija board in your house. Yes, yes, that'll never happen again. And it, it you know, he kind of made fun of it. If you watch that whole video, he kind of made fun of the paranormal because after that happened, he knows the way I feel and everything else. I was very like, uh, but then he, I guess he, they had a brand new one inside the trunk of the car. And one of my uh, children went in the trunk and put a brand new one. As I'm coming out of the door, they knew I was pissed off. So I went out ready to go outside the house and the brand new Ouija board was right at the fucking stump of I'm getting out. So I, of course, me, I'm like, now how in the fuck did that happen? I just got done damn burning this fucking thing. But I told him, I was told by other people in the paranormal community that was not closed properly. It was not closed no, properly. it was not. And then you burnt it and you just released whatever was in there. And think about that. All that stuff after that video and everything, all the stuff that happened and everything else started happening in the house. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Connect interesting connection i'm not saying it is but i mean if you don't close the door you're still allowing like you say it could be, That'd bad be like if good. you just like left, left your front door open you never know who's gonna come in the front door yeah exactly it could be your friendly neighbor or it could be an axe murderer either way you don't leave your front door open exactly exactly and but to me i'm it's not that I'm a skeptic of the paranormal. It's just that I think if you actually truly asked me the question, am I scared sometimes? Yes, because I'm the type of person I deal with facts. I deal with things I can see, things I can touch, smell. And when it's something in which I have no control over or whatever, that type of stuff kind of wigs me out. And you people who do the paranormal, I mean, I, I give it to you because I don't I couldn't see myself doing that on my channel and everything else because i think it would wake me out more than ever because i'd be thinking i hear a noise i hear something in my room did i allow something in my house did i allow this or whatever the case may be and like with you in the paranormal you got some balls big balls just saying the that you guys want to mess around oh i already got an realm. attachment his name is ben and oh, i picked shit. him up in virginia oh good job you got a fucking double fucking person he's not bad He's more of a protector. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, I've never really had anything bad happen to me. The worst that I've had happen. you Okay. So, I'm going to assume you weren't the kid that stuck the fork in the toaster because your mom told you not to. No, I no, I did. I did not do. No. Did you pee on an electric fence because your dad dared you to? No, I didn't do that neither. No, no, no. Do you know what it feels like to be zapped when you're like changing electrical plugs and stuff? That I have had happen to me. Yes, I have had that happen to me. That like tingling zap that runs through your body? Yes, yes. When I was in Virginia, um, we it, we, we did something we shouldn't have and I, we pissed off some spirits, okay? Mm. You can watch in the video... As I'm just bent over laughing because over. Mm -hmm. there's like this whole entire, my whole body felt like I was being electrocuted and my hands were just shaking. Mm. It wasn't terrifying. I was laughing because it felt funny. Oh, look, she's going to interview mom. the next because she does her interviews. So she's, she's going to ask you questions like, no, she's going to ask you questions like, is dad hung as much as he says he is? Oh, no. She said, no, I'm not. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm. Okay. But, so, I mean, we've had, I've had some paranormal experiences. It's just. I hear you. I have so many spirits that are admirated with me. Like, they're just drawn to me. And they have to, they feel like they have to protect me, that nothing bad really happens. Would you say you're a medium? 
No, my mother is. Okay. Okay. Um, which actually I'm going to be uh, interviewing her and another psychic medium. And they both said that it's like people just want to protect you because of who you are. Mm. And it's not like because, you know, I'm a medium or anything. It's because I'm such sweet natured that yes, you are you are in order for and this is their words not mine um they feel they have to protect me from the evil that comes throughout my life mm. i could see that i could see that mm -hmm. hmm. because I, I just like you dad i'll give the last two dollars out of my bank account i'll give you the shirt off my back i don't care if i run through this Street shirtless. Oh well. Hey, make sure I'm in that fucking street. All right. <laughs> okay. Make sure I'm in that street. Just but like, you know, people, I'm joking, you got I'm you got to give. You know, I was always taught you got to give to get. Mm. Well, I never expect. I always give. Mm. It's in your nature. Mm. It's because I don't want to hurt people. Yes, and I feel bad when I hurt people. And then I do everything in the whole entire world to make it better. But I also believe in self-responsibility and everything else, you know. Right. Other people should, you should be responsible for your own actions. And I totally get that. And sure. I know that's why you replaced all of Kyle's stuff. Because you felt bad okay. for breaking his stuff. I felt bad to a certain degree, but it felt so fucking good when I destroyed it, though. It I, felt good at first, <laughs> but then the bad comes, and that it does. It. Does. I I had to learn really. I had to learn that uh, if I allowed my bipolar to control me, mm -hmm. I would hurt a lot of people, and then I would hurt myself. Mm -hmm. So I've learned like you said, meditation and everything else, which is amazing advice for anybody that does suffer with bipolar to find their calm. And not 100%. everybody's calm is the same. No, no, not even close. Not even close. And one, th one thing I will say is, you know, just because one thing works for one individual doesn't mean it's going to work for another person. You know, I, I, I hate when people always give advice on things and they were like, you should do it this way. You know, instead of saying this is what how I deal with something, how I would right. doesn't mean you got to do it the same way because it may not work for you. I have a slogan and mm. I kind of brought it up with my daughter and my mom one day on different days, my mom was really feeling down because they went out and they spent all this money on an RV. Well, they didn't buy a brand new RV. Even if you buy a brand new RV, you never know what's going to go wrong with it. My mom wanted to travel. Mm -hmm. She can't be sitting in a car for very long because of extreme multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. Um, Painful. Painful. Very painful. So they went and got an RV so she could just relax and sleep if she needed to or whatever. You know, she's mm -hmm. not focusing on be, trying to get comfortable in the back seat. Um, but they were just ripping on her. And I go, Mom, what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. Mm -hmm. Why are you allowing them to interfere? influence you in any which way you're doing what you're happy with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i told my daughter that too because everybody was coming down on her you should be doing this you should be doing this you shouldn't be doing this you should live your life this way this ain't the chantelle i know and i'm like <clears throat> look baby girl at the end of the day what's good for the goose is not good for the gander and she goes mom what does that mean i'm like What's good for other people is not good for yourself. And what's yep. good for you is not good for anybody else. No matter the way you look at it, you get either you're the goose or you're the gander. But what's good for somebody else ain't good for you. And she goes, I never thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That so, is true. And that's why I wanted to really interview you is you're such an amazing person and you have such a strong, caring mind and you're intelligent. I can be stubborn sometimes. I can be stubborn as a mother. You can be stubborn, but we all can. True. But at the end of the day, you're such a, you know, you have that heart of gold, just like I do. And sure. I love listening to your opinions on things. Well, again, it's it's more or less, like I said, we bounce off each other very well. I mean, we that, that's first off. So I, I, I have enjoyed this interview and everything else. And like I said, uh, I do encourage if anybody gets to this point in this interview and everything, please look forward to all Saturdays. Lunatic Dad and Froggy Live are going to be together up on different topics and everything else. And once in a while, we'll splash an interview in there, maybe whatever. But I, I really do enjoy talking with you and i do enjoy uh covering different aspects and everything else because i i am believe it or not i'm probably i'm a very big fan of yours more than you know because i i love when people can talk with intelligence you know what i'm saying right because sometimes people just and i'm sitting there some like, people run their mouth and, <laughs> hold on they're they're like the dog the dog is wrong and he is a big boy oh yeah uh, a but a lot of people, when they start running their mouth, they, mm -hmm. um, they're not really trying to, uh, educate anybody or get somebody else's opinion. They're trying to really get what they want out. And that's about it. When, when do people do a lot of just where it gets to the point to where it be you know that they're just talking to talk, that there's nothing behind it and there's no factual shit or whatever the case may be. But being the type of person I am, I'll listen and everything else. But half of the time, I'm just sitting there rolling my eyes like, where, where is this damn mentality at? Again, I'm not judging anybody, but I mean, sometimes people, I think, talk just to they want to hear their own voice, that there ain't nothing behind it. Right. Yeah. Also, there's the people that want to talk, but they only want to talk about themselves. Yeah, I'm I'm very uncomfortable with that. I mean, I don't know if you'd notice over the, all these time you've known yeah. me, Froggy. I don't really like talking about me, per se. I rather like talk about the topics or, you know, things that right. we're, we're going to get into in the future and everything else. And remember, make sure you guys are giving a thumbs up to this interview. And if you don't, well, then I'm going to punch you in your balls. <laughs> or whatever but yes it has been excellent as i said before uh look forward to next week's thing so i mean if you got anything more to say tanya because we'll, we can get no. this uh we can get this thing up we can stay on i'm just saying yeah that we can... i'll go ahead and end it so that way we can get it going up go ahead dad and give us your final words and... yes my final words are i would love to thank my beautiful daughter froggy love uh for allowing me to be interviewed Again, Dad doesn't do many interviews, hardly. Actually, I, don't know, I might have done about two, three in my whole time and everything else. But I do want to say look forward to many, many chats that Froggy Love, Lunatic Dad, will be on Froggy Love's channel. And we will be uploading all these type of different uh, videos. And if you send me the video, maybe Dad will turn around and upload it on Lunatic Dad channel itself. Mm. Yeah, then I give you the credit. So I would definitely give you the credit and everything else. But uh, stay tuned for future content and everything else. We'll be doing it every Saturday. I know it's a little bit long and everything else. But believe it or not, when you got two bright minds, it goes by real fucking fast. Thank that you it does. Much, I didn't Froggy. even think it was an hour long. Hour and 13 minutes. <laughs> well, we did do that six hour stream and it was just basically me and you talking. So, yes, we have done that too before, but time flies so fast when it's just, you know. But like I said, it's when you got two people that have commonality, two people that uh, really just want to shoot the shit. And again, you don't have to agree with everything that me and Froggy are saying. These are just our opinions and these are things in which we think what what we believe you don't again we're making this a special thing that you don't have to agree with us 
for, you know, we're not them. What's good for us is not good for you. Correct. Correct. So now you can finish your interview. All right, Dad, I appreciate you so much for coming up and talking with me and really getting into us knowing you behind the screens, not just the crazy smashing shit dad that everybody knows. I really appreciate that you came out here and talked with me, and I appreciate, you know, all that you've done for the outlaws, and you put your heart fully into it and you are an amazing man and we appreciate you love you love, love everybody you. don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i hope you all have an amazing day love you all bye